Japan Studios is responsible for some of Sony's more unique IPs. From Ape Escape to Gravity Rush, the last guard they made next. Do I need to say more? Other than the fact that the corpse was buried right here. Yes, Sony merged the oldest studio that was established in 1993 with Team Asobi. Merged meaning the majority of the staff was let go or left on their own accord, including the director behind Silent Hill and Gravity Rush, as well as the producer of Bloodborne and the Demon's Souls remake. Why? Well, because Japan Studios wasn't profitable. Enough. To make this clear, they're eradicating a big part of their own history here because said history was only profitable, not insanely profitable. I think this is saying a lot about the current state of Sony. Everything needs to have some mass market appeal, according to themselves. Everything has to look realistic, everything has to be a safe bet and if you're not following that norm, then you'll be shut down. Unless... That new IP of yours is live service and looks like a game I swear I've already seen a thousand times by now. Because I have. The game I just showed you is called Hyenas. Its only claim to fame next to its abhorrent name is being cancelled while this video was in production. The world just wasn't ready for PvEEEEVP. It also has some striking similarities with Sony's fair game. Both are live service extraction shooters with three player teams facing off against each other to steal treasure to stick it to the rich. With edgy humor, both have this bland live service look to them, both have the following logo animation that I could swear I've already seen a thousand times, but... Oh, cool looking glitch effects aside, Marathon looks, visually speaking, quite interesting. Too bad it's going to be a live service extraction shooter just like Fair Game. So it's safe to say, if it's live service, Sony will happily take the risk to break into an oversaturated market, going even as far as to buy entire studios for billions, greenlighting over 12 live service games, one of them being with Deviation Games. Well, surely it's gonna stay at a but on the contrary, letting Japan Studios make the games was clearly too much of a risk. Hopefully it will be a success, otherwise I know what's going to happen to those same studios next. tomorrow's open metaverse. I guess it's not too surprising when a single game costs over 200 million and 6 years to make. Pretty shit when all the top secret info comes out because of a sharpie. But hey, that makes it possible for me to ask, who exactly wants games to take this long, be this expensive, only for graphics you say, wow, one set? Only to never think about those same graphics ever again, because you're not supposed to think about them, right? It's all about immersion, because someone at Sony seemingly thinks that only realism and an abundance of cutscenes can be immersive in an interactive medium, not even taking into account the horrible working conditions this has sparked in the past. Sony is actively avoiding crunch. Today. Great, this just doesn't give the developers working on Last of Us 2 their lost time back. For the sake of their employees, they better not repeat their mistakes. The Last of Crunch articles is only 3 years old. <sighs> look, I'm not saying that games shouldn't look realistic, but I want you to imagine for a second how many mid-sized games with unique visual art styles had even gameplay concepts could have been possible with 200 million with far lower risks attached. For all I care, Sony can make big budget cinematic games, there's clearly a market for them, even though I may not be as interested. They're also one of the few companies that would be able to cope with a failure on this scale if they wanted to. Alternatively, you can also lay off people, I think that's an option too, I guess. All I'm asking for is for them to diversify just a 
teensy tiny bit. After all, if I look at Sony's current lineup, not only is it pretty much non-existent, because all these games take forever to make, demonstrated perfectly by the year 2023, which saw the release of Game of the Year nominee MLB The Show 2023 and Spider-Man 2. There's also nothing that sticks out as being necessarily different from what Sony normally makes. Putting all Sony developed games into a graph from the last 5 years gives us this. For context, this is without DLC unless said DLC was standalone. For games that were only published by Sony, I only included the ones that remained exclusive, otherwise I'd have to include games that were clearly coming to other platforms, but Sony paid for them to do so later. It's one of these practices that changes nothing for PlayStation owners, because said game would have come out on your console regardless of this deal, but hurts everyone else. I guess play truly has no limits. After the contract runs out, did this rule exclude games like Detroit Become Human or Death Stranding, which I consider Sony to have a huge impact on? Yes. Did I only realize that after making all the animations? Maybe. Does it change the conclusion? If you put it into contrast to Nintendo's lineup next to Microsoft's air quotes lineup for the last 5 years, not really. Which brings us to the elephant in the room that most games don't fit into a single genre. I mean, Country Genie is very different from the other games in the action adventure category here, but in it goes with the rest of Sony's layoffs. Though I'd say you can still tell from the draft that Sony has a focus on a certain type of Blu-ray disc imprinted with a third person perspective, combat followed up by cutscenes, followed up by combat, followed up by Ubisoft maps, skill trees, quick time event. You could argue that this has always been Sony's identity, to which I'd respond, was it? Sure, Sony has always had a focus on cinematic, bombastic games, but there was always more than just that. At least, up until recently. You could also say that Sony is very successful with this strategy. Although I'd argue that this focus on games that at the very least look similar from an outsider's perspective is leading to the sales cap of 20 million. Ideally, you'd want something like the Switch's software sales, but Sony seems reluctant to invest in innovation beyond graphics. There's a reason why many Japan studio employees went on to work at Nintendo. Another way to explain it is simply marketing. Sony has very carefully advertised themselves as the default console, the Call of Duty, FIFA, Madden or free-to-play machine, therefore cultivating an audience that rarely goes out of their comfort zone, which in turn leads to smaller games failing. So Sony does the logical thing of shutting those studios down or greatly reducing staff and going all in on what they perceive that audience wants live service games. Too bad it's not working out either, though it might be worth it considering the strong brand recognition they have created with this exact type of marketing. I mean, it's definitely enough for people to look over the price heights for services, next to the higher price tags for individual games, next to the absurdly expensive accessories like the PlayStation Portal, a so-called remote play device. What is a remote play device, you might ask? A synonym for Wii U gamepad, of course. The way this works is as follows. The Wii U pretty much does all the work and then streams it over Wi-Fi to the gamepad. So it really only works when you're nearby or have a very good signal. For 200 bucks you also get no Bluetooth support unless you use Sony's proprietary technology, which costs how much again? No cloud streaming, not even a browser or anything better than a 1080p LCD. Good luck using any Wi-Fi that requires a login without a browser. If you're still remotely considering this, there's also the option to just remote play Doom with your smartphone, tablet or pregnancy test. All you need is a DualSense or one of those controller grips. This train wreck of a system just sums up Sony pretty well for me right now. On the other side, if you enjoy Sony's current strategy, all the power to you. This is an essay after all. For me it just means I don't have to spend 500 euros on a PlayStation.